Hi guys, I hope you're well. If you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Blakemore and I'm a teacher here in Dubai. In this video, I'm going to show you what Google Jamboard is, I'm going to show you how to use it and then share a range of different ideas for you to use with your class. So to start off with, you need to know what is Google Jamboard? Now, Google Jamboard is a fantastic collaborative tool for children and adults to use to share a range of different ideas. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you, I have considered making this video on numerous occasions. However, there are pros and cons of using it. Pros, it is a flexible tool, it is collaborative, and individuals can share ideas all at the same time. Cons is there's no accountability, meaning that someone can make changes and because there's no edit history, you're unable to see what changes have been made and go back unless the other person presses undo. So there's some pros and cons for you to be aware of. However, if you set the ground rules right and you make sure that you get everything considered and correct, then because this is free, which is why I'm making this video, it can be a powerful tool to support modeling and learning. Let's jump into a quick tutorial. It's very straightforward to use, so I'm sure you're going to pick this up very quickly, and then we'll get into a range of ideas. Before we do that, I'd like to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss future content, and feel free to like the video whilst you're there. So you'll be happy to know that the actual writing part of this tutorial within this masterclass is really straightforward. So to start off with, you've got the pen, there's a range of different pens on many different features. If you just click this arrow, you'll find a range of different pens. So we've got marker, highlighter, and brush. So if we start off with pen, select a color, blue, you can see, nice and easy. And then highlighter, this is good for highlighting text quite clearly, uh, there. And then as you can see, paintbrush, there, now rubber, it's just really straightforward rubber, rub all of those sorts of things out, but as I've not got the time, I can just simply clear the frame. From there then, you've got the pointer, this is gonna help you with moving items around. Sticky notes, you've got a range of different sticky notes and you can just type something in here. You can change the color of the sticky note, we can have it neutral, I'm gonna pick yellow, and then just save. And then you can either press cancel if you don't want another one, or you can just continue typing sticky notes. That's something we can do now. <laughs> uh, from there, cancel, we'll clear the frame again. You can then add a picture. There's multiple ways to add a picture. You've got by URL, by camera, so I can take a photo of myself. Um, Google image search and Google Drive, if you've got lots of photos on your Google Drive, or Google Photos. Google image search is perhaps the easiest way to do it. If I type in uh, smile, smiley face, and I can click on a smiley face and simply press the insert button that's just down here in the corner. And then from there, you can change the order. If I have multiple things on here, I can duplicate or just simply press control V. And then obviously from there, I can change the order. So if I want to put it, uh, to the front and have that over the top. And you can start to build up all sorts of layers. This is your rotate. I got confused when I first started this because I kept trying to change the size of that one, but it would rotate. You get size, all those simple things that you probably already know. Um, from there as well, you've got a range of different shapes, circle, square, all those sorts of things. Square is really useful to help you build a range of different templates that I'm gonna show you in a second. And then you've got things down here too. Text, quite straightforward. If you type something here, you've got a range of different sizes and colors. Display is gonna be really big, title, and as we keep going, it gets smaller and smaller. You've got the alignment tool along here and just a few different colors there. You can then zoom in through here, your back and forward buttons are here, and then this easy tool here, it's like a pointer. So if I'm sort of saying, oh, you need to type here, guys, it just circles, it's like a laser pen. From there, then you've got the different slides that are up here. I'm gonna show you a range of different ideas in a second, but that's really straightforward. You can copy and paste, and actually when you're setting tasks for the children, we'll re-go over this in a second, I would recommend copy and paste in those tasks for each child. That way, each child in your class would get a slide, and then the child can come back to that slide and just give their name with the text. So then each child can have their own, and you can then obviously change them as and when needed. To share it with individual people, then you can click on share here. And then from there, you can just enter people, uh, either people you've saved or email addresses, or if you wanted to share it somewhere like Google Classroom, Seesaw, you can get the link and then press get link, copy link, 
but you're going to need to make sure that access rights are correct. So it says anyone with the link. Now you can either change it to just the viewer or the editor. Remember, if you change it to editor, then anyone can change it. And you need to make sure that you have the ground rules set so that you don't just have random people deleting things because that gets very annoying. In addition, you can just press restricted, which means that people can't see it. I'm not really sure why you'd want to do that. Copy link, then you'd be able to send it over to something like your Google Classroom or your Seesaw. From there then, once you've started to do things, then you can rename your file. You can download it as a PDF. This is really useful if you want to uh, evidence things or you want to share it with people in the future. You can save it as an image, which is again, useful for Google Slides and things like that. Um, you can remove certain things or you can make a copy. I'm gonna show you another way to share with children in a second so that it automatically forces them to make a copy too. Another really useful hack, and this is useful for all sorts of Google Suites documents, slides, and also Jamboard, is if you want to immediately force someone to make a copy of something that you're sharing with them, for example, if you've got a template that you've created on Jamboard and you wanna share it with colleagues and know that they're not messing around with your initial Jamboard, then you're going to press share. Go on to that link. Now it says that anyone with a link can edit. That's really important. Copy the link. Now you're gonna paste it. And then where it says edit, you're just gonna change it to copy. Re-highlight that, copy it and paste it into another tab and you'll see what pops up here. It will immediately force you to make a copy of that Google Jamboard so that you know that people aren't messing around with your initial template. So now that we have that, let's go over a range of different ideas that I have for using Google Jamboard with my class. So, to start off with brainstorm ideas. Now, what do you know about the weather? Well, there's loads of different ideas. You can either have it as text or sticky notes and children can just share their ideas. When it rains, it gets wet. Really simple, but then again, capital letters. So it might be really important for you to then go to a child and ask who made that one. And then from there, you can ask them to edit things. From there then, you've got other things like uh, highlighting, word classes, for example, if you've got here, noun, adjective, verb, adverb, and you've got this sentence, you can ask children, again, if they've got their own slides and they've named their own slides, this works perfectly because then you can see what individuals can do. Uh, so then you're asking them, right, can you highlight things? So you go into the pen tool, you go into the highlighter here, and then if we start off by looking at the nouns, we've got boy, Matt, we look at adjectives, red, Red mat, and then if we go to verbs, green, sat, weighted, etc., 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 and then adverbs. There, there we go. So that's something you could do. Obviously, you can do bigger text, and this could be a real activity that you do with your class. I can imagine quite a valuable activity too. From there, then describe the landscape. So you've given the children a photo of something and their job then is to describe it. There's loads of different things you can do with this. You could change it up a little bit to suit um, other things too. So then, um, just have it so that you're using words and get the children to put their own name above it, for example, or have their own version. Um, or you could get them to write sentences too. It's just a really easy one for you to just share ideas, basically. Map work, this is a bit of geography, so there's a range of different things you could do with that. You could get them to identify a range of different towns. Let's go to the uh, click in, a range of different capital cities, or you could identify specific countries. So if I make this a little bit smaller, oh, told you about that rotate, and just put that on top of London there. And then it says circle England, now you can see that's a problem. So if we go to transparent, there we go. Circle England, it's a bit more than that. Tricky. It's tricky to get it all perfect, but then again, and then I could come to that. Then I could uh, come to the pencil, England, match that up to there, or I could just simply use the pencil. So if I wanted Scotland, I could just use that tool Wales, or I could use different colors. Uh, Ireland, I've not put Northern Ireland. Sorry, guys. And you can see there's all sorts of different ways that you can use map work. Um, you can do this for the world, uh, plotting things. There's all sorts of different objectives for geography that you could use this for, which brings me on to the next one, which is votes. 
Um, again, this is really supportive for teamwork. Chocolate, strawberry, mint, vanilla ice cream. So you could have, what was your favorite chocolate? And then each child could then have their own tab. So Thomas. And just drag that in, make it smaller. And just have those different votes. And then you could start to look at data and this could be really good for statistics and maths. From there, then you've got explain your answers. So if you've got the tools like I'm using now, so I'm using Screen Classify because I've paid for it, and you've got Loom, again, two really good free resources, then you can get children to explain something using a verbal vocabulary, and then you could also get them to make sure that they teach someone using their understanding. So it's a really good mastery task to make sure that children embed learning. From there, you've got pros and cons. So you could give the children um, a scenario and ask them for the pros and cons of a specific thing. From there, the children could then do a sticky note or text based on whether or not they've got their own copy or not. From there, you've got a timeline. So really straightforward, children match events on a timeline. This can be sometimes quite tricky to do, uh, especially when you're trying to get them to stick it in books and they stick it in the wrong order and they've stuck things down with glue and all of a sudden it's quite challenging. So if they've simply got things there, then they can order things quite easily. So. I was born in 1994, sharing some personal details. 1999, went to school, YouTube started in 2018, and then here I am making a Jamboard tutorial now. And then obviously you can use the pencils and things like that to mark key dates. And then you could use the uh, text box to type things needed and then make it bigger as so. From there then, we've also got an extension of using a timeline, for example, is a number line. So really good for math. So if we've got two plus 12 equals, well, we put the biggest number on this side of the number line, and then we use our pencil tool, or pen tool, it doesn't really matter, to jump on one, two, plus one, fast forward, Mr. Blakemore, 13, 14, and then you just put the answer there as and when you'd be modeling with the children. From there, you've got simple notes. So as you can see, I'm using the pen tool. It can be quite challenging to use on a laptop, but if you have some sort of tool that can really help you, for example, uh, an iPad would be great to just do written notes. So here's some written notes and you can just draw, do little labels, um, do a face. As you can see, there's all sorts you can do with the notes and it would be, just be really good for the children to jot down. Um, again, especially if they've got tools that can support them with that writing using those different pen tools. And there you've got character description. So similar to set and description, you could have a range of different adjectives already set up and the children have to create their own sentences. Or if they're not quite at that level, children could just simply create adjectives for a specific character. Again, building up children's vocabulary and supporting English writing too. This would be really good to sort the words, it could sort the words into a sentence. So if we go on to our clicker tool again, the something boy strolled through the something forest in search of something strawberries. Uh, so if we say the kind boy, uh, delicious, that wouldn't fit. So again, you've got to go through and get the children to review it. So strolled, beautiful forest in search of delicious strawberries. Then from there, you can give the children their own ownership. So this time, fill in the blanks, it's up to the children to type in their own words. And you could give the children a checklist of different types of words that you need to use. It's just up to them to fill in the blank. From there, you've got top 10. So you could give children a category. So top 10 sports activities. And you either do it as a class or the children have their own and they just create their own top 10s. And there's loads of different things that you could do with top 10s, but it's a nice open template. Again, if you want to copy these templates, I'm gonna have it as a forced copy available in my description. Feel free to click onto that, it is free. Um, from there, digital poster, perhaps culminating all these different skills together, you can see I've started to build a digital poster. From here, you can see I can just simply edit, and I can add in little post-it notes. I can add in text them. A forest fire is dot, 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 drag the box, and I can start to build up that digital poster too. And then obviously, as I've showed you before, once they've done that, they can download it as a PDF and they can attach it to whatever they need to, uh, whether it's Seesaw and things like that, but it's a really nice way to have things laid out. And there we go. 
That marks the end of the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and you've learned how to use Google Jamboard and a range of different ideas for you to try with your class. If you have, feel free to like it. That's always really appreciated. I want to know how you're going to use Google Jamboard with your class. Are you going to use some of my ideas or are you going to perhaps try something else? Let me know down in the comments and if you've got any other ideas, let other teachers know too. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I make a range of ed tech, life in Dubai, and teaching videos too. So hit the notification bell to be alerted when I post future videos too. Hopefully I will see you in the next one, but until then, I'm out.